Welcome to tutorial 11, Performing a Monte Carlo Analysis in GPSX. This is the final tutorial video in the GPSX series. A Monte Carlo analysis can be used to enhance understanding of probabilistic scenarios. It can determine at what value an event will occur and the probability associated with each value. For example, the alpha factor for wastewater should be between 0.4 and 0.7, and that the probability of it being any particular number inside this range is uniform. By assigning probabilities to the range of values, we can use Monte Carlo analyses to not only investigate the plane's performance over the range, but the probability of the observed performance characteristics. The goal of this tutorial is for users to become familiar with how to implement a Monte Carlo analysis in GPSX. Please note that the GPSX Advanced Tools module is required to complete this tutorial. Create new model layout and save it under an appropriate name. Turn on the grid lines by going to View, Display Grid, and ensure that the Mantis 2 library has been selected. Drag onto the drawing board the following objects a wastewater influent object from the influent process group, a completely mixed tank from the suspended growth processes group, and a rectangular secondary clarifier in the secondary clarifier process group. Now let's connect the streams. Connect the influent stream to the CSTR, the CSTR effluent to the influent of the final clarifier, and create a recycle stream between the final clarifier and the aeration tank. We will now edit the stream names. For the influent object, label it influent and the influent stream WWINF. Label the completely mixed tank CSTR, the overflow MLSS, the recycle stream RAS, and the pump flow PMP. Label the final clarifier, final clarifier the overflow FE, and the pump flow WAS. Let's verify that the object models are at the defaults. Ensure that the influent is using a COD states model, the CSTR is using a Mantis 2 model, and the clarifier is using a simple 1D clarifier model. Access the plant-wide properties. We will simulate winter conditions by changing the liquid temperature to 10 degrees Celsius. Now let's change some parameters in the model objects. Right click on the CSTR and go to input parameters, operational, and set the specified oxygen transfer by variable to entering airflow, and set the airflow into the aeration tank to 15,000 meter cube per day. Accept this form. Right click on the clarifier and go to input parameters, operational, and set the pump flow to 70 meter cube per day. Save the layout and switch into simulation mode. We will create input controllers for the CSTR object. Go to input parameters, kinetic, and drag the maximum growth rate for ammonia oxidizer parameter from the ammonia oxidizing biomass section to the input control section. Additionally, within the same form, drag the maximum growth rate for nitrate oxidizer from the nitrate oxidizing biomass section to the input control section. Right click on the aeration tank and go to input parameters, operational, and select the Diffused Aeration More button and drag the Alpha Factor Fine Bubble parameter to the Input Control tab. Open the Input Controls property window. For the Ammonia Oxidizer Growth Rate, set a range of 0.5 to 1.2 per day, and set the slider type to Analyze Monte Carlo. Select the distribution button that appears and edit the distribution settings. Change the type to normal, the mean to 0.9, and the standard deviation to 0.1. Repeat the same range for the nitrate oxidizer and change the controller to the analyzed Monte Carlo type.
In the distribution settings, change the type to normal, but in this case change the mean to 1 and the standard deviation to 0.1. For the alpha factor, change the range to 0.4 to 0.7 in the controller to analyze Monte Carlo. Leave the distribution as uniform. Let's create an input control for the number of Monte Carlo runs that will be completed. Find this variable by going to Layout, General Data, System, Input Parameters, Simulation Tool Settings. We will now set up the graphs for the output variables representing the input parameters. Create a new tab and label it Input Distributions. We will add to this three graphs, one for each parameter. The first graph will be for the maximum growth rate for ammonia oxidizer from the CSTR's output variables input parameters kinetic ammonia oxidizing biomass header menu. The second graph will be for the maximum growth rate for nitrate oxidizer. And the third graph will be for the alpha factor fine bubble from output variables, input parameters, operational, diffused aeration sections, more button, diffused air header menu. For each of these graphs, open the properties window, rename the graphs appropriately, change the type to probabilistic and auto scale the axes. Create new tab and label it Output Distribution. We will add four graphs to this tab. From the CSTR, go to Output Variables, State Variables, and drag onto the tab the variable names for dissolved oxygen, ammonia nitrogen, nitrate, and nitrate. We will now edit the properties of these graphs. For the nitrate and nitrate graphs, simply rename the graph, change the type to probabilistic, and auto-scale the axis. Make the same changes also to the dissolved oxygen graph. We would like to view this graph in higher resolution, so adjust the number of bins to 20. In addition, we will set a target value of greater than 2 mg per liter. For the ammonia nitrogen graph, renamed to ammonia nitrogen, change the type to probabilistic and auto scale the axis. We would also like to see this graph at a higher resolution, so increase the number of bins to 20. A target value should be set to less than 3 mg per liter. Save the layout, 
From the toolbar, open the Analyze drop-down list and select Monte Carlo. At this time, also select Analyze mode. Run the simulation. The simulations will run one after another while collecting the output of the model for post-simulation analysis. You can follow the progress of the simulations on the input tab as a red indicator on the three input parameters progresses through the required simulations. There are 1,000 of them by default. Note that it may take several minutes for the simulations to complete, depending on the speed of your computer. When the simulations are completed, you should see the distribution of input parameters for the alpha constant and the two growth rates. The growth rate should follow a normal distribution, whereas the alpha factor should have a uniform or flat distribution. Note that the distribution of actual values used may not quite fit the expected distribution shape. This is due to only running 1000 simulations, but would be more representative of the desired distribution with larger number of simulations. The graphs on the Output Distributions tab shows the performance of the plant under the varying model input. The effluent ammonia graph illustrates that the plant is nitrifying most of the time. The target line shows that the plant effluent ammonia is equal to or less than the target of 3 mg nitrogen per liter. Note that in the Monte Carlo analysis, you may receive slightly different solutions, but the percent value recorded on the graph should be within the range of 85 to 90%. You can create a new scenario to adjust the aeration capacity. Try increasing the volume of the aeration tank and the airflow into the system to see how it affects the distributions. You can also look at the effect of the number of runs performed. Save the layout. You have now completed tutorial 11, which is also the last tutorial in this GPSX tutorial series. You should now be familiar with how to implement a Monte Carlo analysis in GPSX.